my dad's cap. Stop crying, you're so prat. I'm not crying. I'm just thinking how things might have been really different if my dad was only two foot that way when that ceiling come in. Malvi! Yeah, well, he weren't. What, Uncle Zach? Get up, Bill. Really. I need your help. Why? Uh, it's a bit personal. Do you do with me injuries? What injuries? Uncle Zach, if he's taking to the toilet, you won't ask Butch. I'm not taking you to the toilet. Of course it's not the toilet. Look, just get up here, will you? We can't because we're too busy clearing up. You what? You can't do that, you pillocks. Dad? You need help. That's what I'm saying. What the heck are you playing at? I'm trying to make a few bob for the family. North Yorkshire might need a few things, Uncle Zach, but a bearded drag artist ain't one of them. Not another one of your scams. Look, this place is dangerous. I've been hurt. Now, whose fault is that? Well, it was yours, Dad. Because you punched that pillar. The fella can punch his own house, can't he? Anyway, Tara won't know that I hit the pillar. There I was, having a kip on the settee, and wallop, the ceiling landed on me. <laughs> now, come on, get upstairs and make me look hurt. Lady Tara will be here any minute. Huh? I rang her, didn't I? Oh, Zach! Come on, man, eh? And you make this place look worse. Oh. Sorry, I had to ask you an early bit. If something urgent's come up. Champagne breakfast with Lord Snooty at Snooty Hall? Yep, stewed tea with Mr. Dingle and his clan. <sighs> I won't even ask. Yes? Did you hurt yourself playing rugby? Just dirt. You want me in uniform? No. So only the dingles, no need to push the boat out. But I wouldn't mind sinking the damn thing if they were in it. <sighs> Morning, Chris. Not taken our happy pool yet. Better. <laughs> so, what's up at Moron Mansions? <sighs> Zach phoned. Apparently the ceiling fell on his head last night. Oh. No worries there, then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be serious, Chris. If the building is unsafe, there could be legal implications. Compensation to be paid. Leave this to me. By the time I'm finished, they'll be offering us compensation. Chris, I know you're my estate manager, and I know you'll think I'm being stupid, but I'd like to visit the Dingles on my own, handle it my way. I wish you wouldn't. But I want to. You can have my full permission to say I told you so. Well, how can I refuse an offer like that? But... Call me if they get out of hand, yes? Mm, cubs on her. Mm. You can't have been a cub. Oh, I definitely wasn't a guide. Do you know what this is, Betty? Huh? Yeah? It's a dish, Mark. Ah, do you know to use one? Open wide. Ha ha. Do the flaming washing up. Get naughty. Hey, 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 what is going on? Take a wild guess. I am not washing up for him, Cathy, and that's final. OK, look, Betty, can you take Alice to school and I shall get this sorted out? Cathy was saying it was next week, and that you were going. Good morning to you too, excuse me. Mr Pollard. Hello. Can I have a word? Concerning? It's about the collection. Ah, oh, sorry, old chap. Uh, out of luck. <laughs> no change. I'm talking about your collection, Mr Pollard. The antiques you're storing free of charge in my village hall. Oh, surely you're not still banging on about that? I'm afraid I am, but this is the last time I shall mention it. Thank heavens for that. Because if you won't do anything about moving them, and the money you owe for storage, well, I won't be responsible for the consequences. Splendid. I'll have to watch out for a thunderbolt, will I? <laughs> Oh, Betty, did you see we've got a special offer? Where on? Suntan cream. Half price. Over by the dandruff shampoo. Suntan cream? Well, you and Settle need some, won't you? When you go away on that holiday you won from the Houghton Courier. Oh, shh. Seth doesn't know anything about that. I tried to tell him, but he didn't take the blindest bit of notice of me. That's the way I want it to stay. What? We're just not going. Why not? Because <sighs> I can't let Cathy down. Blanket. No. Okay. Don't speak quite much. I'm a sick man, yeah. Morning, Butch. Yeah, me daddy's uh, 
He's sleeping. Morning, Mickey. Just passing. Thought I'd see how Steve's going. Can't tell yet. No, I suppose you won't know for a while. Oh, I can spot a good quarry man second to see him. Trouble is, I haven't seen him yet. He's late. That or invisible. Prime way to kick off your first day in a new job. Sorry, Mr. Tate. I'm, I'm speaking out of line here. I know he's a pal of yours. Nah. I just own this quarry. You're the boss. You should treat him just like the others. You won't sack me then if I give him a good rollicking. Rollick as much as you like. Right. Only not in front of me, of course. Like you say, he's a good friend of mine. I don't want to make him feel small. You best be off, then. Morning. <laughs> this whole place is a health hazard. You said it. Tea, Lady Tea? Um, no, I'm fine, thank you. Is that you, Amanda? Oh, no, Uncle Zach, Lady Tara's here. Huh? Oh, hello, you ladyship. He was shouting down the telephone at half past seven. Well, he's like this, and then he wakes up again. Yeah, we, we think he's suffering from that constipation. Concussion. <laughs> no! That boosted jingle! Uh, uh, Nelly! Nelly, is that you, Nelly? Yeah. Oh. 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 Nice oh. and cool. Huh? Oh, I can't apologise enough, Mr. Dingle. This house is a disgrace. It ain't your fault, sweetheart. It's them tits. But they don't care. Well, I do. First, we're going to make this building safe, and then we'll talk about financial compensation. Compensation? What for? Your injuries. You know, Summer, you're a good lass. I don't want your money. Oh. Oh, Lady T! <laughs> You're a miracle worker. He's looking better already. Yes, I think he is. I'll just uh, wet this tea towel for you again. I wonder if you'd mind um, pinning this somewhere prominent. Antiques? Has a parishioner died without me being aware of No, no. Um, they're from a dealer. Uh, old stock, I believe. Old stock. Oh, antiques. Yes, I see. Very good. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Oh, who is he, this generous chap? I think he'd prefer to remain anonymous. Uh, so, you'll spread the word? Yes, yes, of course. With pleasure. Thanks. I I've got a dash. <laughs> How much conversation do you think I ought to give the Dingles? How should I know? I mean, man, you must have wasted at least ten pounds worth of makeup and that tea towel. Ruined. Another fifty pence? So I'll give her ten pound fifty then. No, I can't. Well, give her ten and a half grand. You're the lady of the manor. I'm just a chauffeur. Oh, all right, Biff. That is enough. I'm tired of this. What? Is this how you treat every woman you sleep with? No. This is the way that I treat every boss that I work for. Well, then I'm amazed you've ever managed to keep a job. Well, I haven't. Not really. You said it, Tara. Remember? The only thing between us in working hours is the job. I know, but a bit of warmth couldn't do any harm, could it? And then what? Start flirting in the car? Pulling into country lanes? Empty barns. And all of a sudden, I'm your stud. If... And the chauffeur's wages. There you go. Thank you. Wake up! I don't know, Seth. The older I get, the more I reckon men and women should live apart and only get together when nature calls. Well, casting my mind back to when I were your age, nature used to call about three times a day. So what does it do now? It makes an appointment. Yeah. <laughs> right, but if you want my advice, you do it right thing. Keep well away. Kim and Tara, they're like a pair of queen bees. It's a battle royal and we're all prawns on chessboard. Prawns? I said pawns. Wash your ears out, man. Give over. 
Is this an early lunch or late tea break, Seth? Oh, it's a friendly five minutes. On my time. OK, blame me. Dock ten minutes off my wages, Your Highness. I'd like a word, please, Biff. I'm listening. Seth. Don't push me, Biff. Push you to what? Sack me? Save your breath. I quit. Because? Because I don't like being shown up. And you were picking on Seth. Even if I was, which I wasn't, what gives you the right? One minute you insist that we keep strictly to the rules during working hours, but then you take advantage of our... Ugh, by insulting me in front of an employee. You hypocrite! Is that the best answer you can manage? Walking away? Yeah. You've got enough answers for the both of us. No, Biff. I haven't. Stay. Talk to me. Just a minute. Th that it's clock's true. mine. It belonged to me, does see? And I was swindled out of it by that sniveling little crook Pollard. Eric Pollard? Ah, that's him. I was taken by that scoundrel myself. Here. You take it. Right. Now then, Vicar. Oh, Reverend. Oh, uh, Reverend Vicar. What's the one for it, then? Uh, what did Mr Pollard pay? Oh, fiver, something like that. Then it's yours for a fiver. Right. Fiver. Thank you. Here. I'd like you to have it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, take it. You liked it, didn't you? Well, we're just in the book for a fight. <laughs> where's the catch? Oh, that just typical woman, where's the catch? <laughs> Will you come for tea with me this afternoon? Oh, what the hell are you playing at? Shops. Shops? Mm, antique shops. I Hello, that'll be five pounds, please. I didn't warn you this morning, remember? But I didn't think you were being serious, excuse me. Yes, I got that impression. But you're selling my stuff for God's sake. Oh, I wouldn't say for God's sake, but I'm sure he'd approve. Now you stop this right now, I promise you I'll grab you by your dog collar and... Perhaps if you stitched a few together. Thank you. Hey, Tinkerbell, catch. Prezi for me and the lads. Keep them. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if you don't match your boots, Tinkerbell. Do you go this easy on all you new guys, Mick? Or just the ones Chris Tate tells you to pick on? I run his quarry, so not Chris Tate. You're right. So it was just a social call this morning, was it? Do you want these? Thanks all the same. Up to you if you don't want to wear tomorrow. Just remember, in this game, we pay by the day. It's not as if we've announced our engagement in the Times. Maybe, but I still don't see how I can carry on working for you. Not now. Oh, it was just sex. Why does that have to change anything between us? Because sex does. It means something. Or at least it does to me. And me? How many men do you think I've slept with since Alex? One! You! Doesn't exactly make me Tatler's Tart of the Month. Well, maybe we shouldn't have let ourselves go, but we did. And yes, you're right, there's no future in it, but please don't punish me by resigning. Drivers are ten a penny, Tara. Friends aren't. We were friends, weren't we, or was I fooling myself? No. Then can we start with a clean sheet? OK. I'll give it a go. Hmm. These days, half the young girls look as though they've slept in a dustbin. There's no... Oh, what's the word? Glamour. That's it. No glamour. Ah, uh, like the film stars used to have. Mm. Don't get me going about film stars. I'd bore you to death. Oh, you won't, you know. 
I'm potty about all them old films. You're not. I am. Who was your favourite actress? Oh, get on with you. Is that for the couple by the window? Uh, no, why? They have just complained to me about you. Oh? They said they ordered 20 minutes ago. Oh, yeah, well, I did apologise for the delay. No, according to them, you said if they want a timetable, they should go to the station. <laughs> well, if they can't take a joke. You're not here to make jokes. Right. That's it. You are a grateful little madam. Do you know what I was going to do? For your benefit. What? Turn down a fortnight's free holiday, that's what. I must have been out of my tiny mind. Betty, I am grateful. Oh, it's too late now, Cathy. You can find yourself a new slave. Me and Seth are having a break. How are you going to pay me for all this slap? Don't worry, Mandy, love. Once Lady T coughs up, you'll be buying makeup by the barrel, lord. She already does. Oh, shut up, Butch. You know the blue for us this morning. Yeah, septic head. Slopping that wet towel all over me mush. Tower nearly sussed us. She did. She never. She did. Hello? Lady Hawkwell. Uh, Zach, yes, he's uh, feeling a bit better. Doctor? The uh, doctor says he needs a, an head x-ray. <laughs> Hospital? Um, oh, no, no. Needs complete bed rest. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Lady Hopewell. Thank you very much for... Um, solicitor? We haven't got a solicitor. Oh, you mean your solicitor? Uh. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sure that'll be fine. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, bye. Well? She says she wants to move us into temporary accommodation while this place gets fixed up. Temporary accommodation? Where? You'll never believe it when I tell you. You'll stop this at once. It's within your power to stop it, Eric. Pay up or move out. I can't move my stuff out, you god-bothering buffoon, because I've got nowhere to move it to. Then pay up. Who do I make the check out to? Uh, me. And then you can get these vultures out of here. There you go. Thank you. Now, um, can I give you this? Perfect, isn't it? Spacious, cheap rent, village location. You knew about this, didn't you, before you made me sign the cheque? The Lord giveth, and he taketh away. Tara, you're going to need a van, not this. Oh, they can't have that much luggage. Not talking luggage. We're going to be carrying tents, gas stoves, sleeping bags. Like... Doing such a snob. <laughs> no. I just know the dingles, that's all. Oh, I have faith. I'm sure the dingles will rise to the new situation. And what situation would that be? Walking upright? I do wish you wouldn't sneak up like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get a bell. So, what's up with the dingles? I'm moving them into new accommodation while their house is made safe. What? You... I thought that we'd been over this earlier. OK, you're right, you're right. But please, tell me you're not going to pay them compensation. No, I'm spending virtually nothing. In fact, I think you'll find the solution I've come up with is one that you'll be proud to have thought of yourself. I'm not sure I should be giving you this, Ashley. Why? As a rule, I would ban a scoundrel like you from my pub. Taking money by extortion, deceiving the public. It was all in a good cause. Yes, yes well, I suppose I could make an exception. On one condition. Yes? You give me the pleasure of telling everybody what you did to Eric Pollard. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again. Oh, evening. Uh, can I get you a drink? Well, that depends. On what? You said you'd introduce me to Greta Garbo. Oh, I will. But you know she's shy. I want to be alone. <laughs> now, you promise, <laughs> promise you won't frighten her? I promise. All right. All right. Oh, 
Can I hold it? Ah. Garbo. My idol. Yeah. She's not quite my cup of cocoa, you know. I like them a bit more womanly. You know, I have a gardener and Lana Turner. Can I confess something? It's a free country. You won't laugh? I'll do my best. Well, when I was young, I was that mad about Greta Garbo. Oh, no, it's too daft. Go on. Well, I taught myself how to write her autograph. Then I used to write letters to myself and sign them, Greta Garbo. Why? Well, so I could show off to my friends. Did you keep them? Oh, no. But I can still write her autograph to this day. Can you now? Can you really? Shall I ask Turner if he got them Ouija boards? Eh? You've only spoke two words to me since you came home. Chips or mash? That's three. I'm sorry, love. I've, uh, I've got a lot on my mind. Oh, it's not me, then. As if... <sighs> I've had a barney with Cathy. I've told you she's working you too hard. Well, that's what the barney were over. You need a rest, love. Yeah, well, I'll be getting one soon. I won that holiday competition, didn't I? That won it, paper? You little tinker. <laughs> Thought you'd gone home. Sorry to disturb you. A couple of things to sort out here. How did it go with the Dingles? Salvation Army managed to find beds for all of them. Oh, Chris, as if I put them in some hostel. No, I suppose not. The luxury could go to their heads. I found somewhere much better. And you'll be pleased to hear, completely free. It's my property. Let me guess. You've got an empty stable. No. They're lodging here, in the nursery flat. Chris, before you explode, think about it. The nursery flat's empty. You won't even see the dingles. Well, that's great. I'll just hear them and smell them. Well, they've got their own kitchen and bathroom. There's no need to bother you at all. Uh, sorry to trouble you, Lady T. There's no room in our fridge. I couldn't, um... Oh, kitchen's that way. That way, too. Uh... Hey, ta, Chris. Home kitchen and bathroom, eh? Oh, it's just a beers for heaven's sake. Hiya. Uh, uh, we ain't got any hot water, Lady Hockwell. Is it all right if I am? Oh, yeah. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Haven't got a bath you could fit into. Honestly, I didn't do this to upset you. Really? You just thought I could do with the company? I did it because it was the best solution. Excuse Lady T. Have you any bog uh, sorry, toilet paper? I'm sure we have, Mr. Dingle. Well, don't have to be soft out. Chris will do fine. Yeah, come in, Mr. Dingle. Okay. Mm. 